I run a retro tech YouTube channel in addition to this channel called Print and Play Retrospective. Which, if you didn't know about it, and retro tech is your jam, you should definitely check it out. And, like every other up and coming YouTuber, I'm obsessed with watching my sub count and view count. So I decided I wanted to build a device that would fit in well on my retro tech channel and give me my stats at a glance. And so, the Mac Mini sub counter was born. Just a bit smaller than the retro computers it was inspired by, it's capable of displaying the information for up to two channels. It's also capable of showing the time and a couple of other screens inspired by the look and feel of original Macintosh computers. Interested in building one for yourself? Well, stick around and I'll show you how, right after I tell you about the sponsor of today's build, PCBWay. If you've been around the channel recently, you'll know that I've been using PCBWay to get custom etched PCBs for my projects. Ordering from them is easy. You just design the PCB in your favorite CAD software, upload the build files, make sure the preview looks the way you expected it to, and send it off for fabrication. They've got plenty of options for both basic and advanced boards, allowing you to add more layers, change the colors, and more. First time customers of PCBWay get a $5 off coupon, which often means you only have to pay shipping on your first order. From now until the end of November, PCBWay is running their annual PCB design contest. Every person who participates gets a free ESP32 development board, and there are an additional $6,000 worth of prizes up to be won. Check out PCBWay by following the link in this video's description. The electronics that make this up are pretty basic. The control board is a D1 Node MCU board based on the ESP8266. This has integrated Wi-Fi, which is essential to this type of build. The screen is a 128 by 128 pixel OLED display with an SSD 1327 controller. You'll find links to both in the description of this video. You'll need four jumper cables to wire the components together, and that's it for the electronics. I started by modeling the screen and the D1 board in Fusion 360 so that I could then design the case around it. While the screen is 128 by 128, we won't be using the entire display. To keep the aspect ratio from the original Mac, I'll be hiding part of the screen behind the 3D printed case. With the case modeled, I went hunting for the best material to print it out of, and the printed solid Jesse Beige 500 PLA seemed like the perfect fit. It's color matched to the Amiga 500, which, while not exactly the same as the Macintoshes of the era, gets us pretty close. The parts printed out pretty well, and the color looks great. Unless you put it side by side with an original Macintosh, you're probably not going to notice that there's a difference at all. Wiring the board to the screen is pretty simple. You connect VCC from the screen to the 3.3 volt output from the board. Then connect ground to ground. SCL will connect to the D1 pin. And SDA will connect to the D2 pin. With the components connected, we can now screw the screen into place with the pins upward and towards the top of the unit. It's held in place with a few M2 6mm screws, although you may find that the pressure fit inside the case, with the additional pressure of the wires pressing against it, is enough to hold it. Next, we slot the ESP module into the bottom with the USB port facing towards the back. If yours doesn't have the headers installed, you'll want to solder these with the pins facing up, but alternatively, you can solder the wires directly to the board. Finally, line up the slot on the back with the board, and slide it into place. Then use some additional M2 screws to hold it all together. With that, the build portion is done and we can move on to the software. When coming up with the software side, I decided to start off with the visuals. I found some older pictures of Mac OS that I could use as references. Then I used Microsoft Paint to create the static screen the mini Mac would display, setting the resolution to 128 by 90 pixels. From there, I used the image to CPP project on GitHub to convert my images to byte arrays that can be stored in my code and displayed when needed. So, if you want to customize yours, you can create your own images and replace mine. To program our mini Mac with code, we'll need to add some stuff to the Arduino IDE. First, let's add support for the board. In the Arduino IDE, click File, Preferences, then, in the additional boards manager URL, we'll paste in the path to the JSON that contains the ESP8266 info. If you already have a value there, you can just put a comma at the end and paste in next to it. Next, we'll have to add our support libraries. If any of them ask you to add dependencies, go ahead and do that as well. Click Tools, Manage Libraries, and we'll start with the Arduino GFX library. Next, we'll also need the YouTube API library. 
We'll also need support for our display, so go ahead and add the SSD1327 library. And finally, since we're going to want to be able to display the current time, we'll also install the Network Time Protocol Client Library by searching for NTP Client. And now that we have all our support libraries installed, we just need to gather some more info to make the code work with your YouTube channels. We'll start by going to console.cloud.google.com. Click the arrow next to select a project, then click the new project button in the top right corner, and you can call it whatever you want. On the left hand side, click on APIs and Services, and then select Library. Search for YouTube, and select the YouTube Data API. Click Enable. Click Credentials. Click Create Credentials. Select API Key. Copy the generated API Key and click Close. From there, we can switch back to our code and replace the API key in the code with the new one we just generated. Now go to youtube.com, click on your icon in the top right corner, select YouTube Studio, then copy the text after channel forward slash in the web URL. Switch back to your code and paste it into the channel ID. Finally, you'll want to change the channel name information to reflect the name of your channel. You do this by editing the text in channel 1 line 1 and channel 1 line 2. Then repeat this process for a second channel if you have one. Otherwise, you can just use the same information for both channels or modify the code to only use one channel. And with all of our modifications done, you can then upload the sketch to your ESP8266. And if you've done everything right, your new sub counter should start up. And that's it, your project is ready to go. It's a pretty simple build and I really like how it turned out. The code is based on various bits and pieces I found on the internet and I've linked some of the builds that inspired this one in the description below. Thanks for watching until the end and thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this build and to all of my awesome Patreon supporters for helping keep the channel going. That's it for this build, but until next time, stay creative.